So, in the interview with rock bottom Rickard and Johan of Evergrey, keyboarder and bass player. Yes, how were the reactions on the first two gigs of this tour? The reactions? Yeah, the uh, fan reactions on your new material and especially on you. Uh, really good, really good. Uh, I mean, uh, it's we're opening for Delane, and you can never be sure how uh, the Delane fans will react to us. But it, it feels like w it's our own gig, actually. Um, really well received. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, the crowds are usually a bit like calm in the middle, but then you know, towards the end, you know, it feels like we have them. So it's yeah, it's good. Yeah. So yeah, far, it's so good. good yeah. So far, so and good. But you did many great albums, great tours, but you are still yeah, a special guest. Why don't you are uh, a headliner right now? When I first heard, oh, Evergrey comes on tour, I thought they are headliner now, but you are a special guest. What's the yeah. reason for that? We do, we do, uh, we're going to do headline tours as well. Uh, but this, I don't know, we, we, we got a really good, yeah, got a good offer, good offer from the lane to be special guests. Oh yeah. And we, we I mean to be to be honest we, we don't draw that many people as we do on this tour if we are by ourselves. So it's a good good way for us to uh, to, new, to uh, new raise our fan base yeah, mm -hmm. basically. Oh, yeah. But of course we will uh, do headline shows as well. Mm -hmm. I guess next year in the United States, I guess, you're touring yeah. USA as yeah. a headliner? Yeah, as headliner, yeah, oh, as yeah. headliner, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do, uh, I guess we're going to do a lot of weekend shows uh, yeah. around, in, around in Europe uh, as well. Yeah, so oh, yeah. festivals and maybe, maybe headlining in the fall, maybe? Yeah. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll yeah. see. Mm -hmm. we'll see. Mm -hmm. yeah, The Storm Within, the new album, so it's an interesting title. I don't know, I guess Tom writes the lyrics, but what's behind this title? What's the lyrical meaning? Well, I mean, the, 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 the album is, is like, uh, well, what, what our record label said, it was our first love album. Yeah. But it's like a lack of love album, more to the point. Uh, it's about having love and then, you know, uh, losing it, losing your, your loved one and, uh, and the process that you go through. You know, as a person oh, yeah. in, the, in that period, and uh, it can be quite uh, an upheaval personally. So, I guess the storm within, I guess, is the, what you could say happens inside you when you're going through ah, yeah. uh, breakup or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and it's interesting for Evergrey, heavy parts, heavy guitar riffing, heavy sounds, but also, yeah, you work with strings, choirs, and orchestral elements. Mm -hmm. How hard is it to find the right balance between the orchestral parts, keyboard parts, and the, the heavy parts? Is it a hard task to find the right balance? Uh, yes and no. I mean, it's it's always, it's so much music in eh, every way, so, so it's, it can be hard to find the space, but I, I must say, also, the guy who mixed the album, uh, Jacob Hansen, he's, he has really, he, he made the last album as well, um, what's it called? Games <laughs> for the Broken. Games for the Broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he can, he, it's, it's a lot of thanks to him, he can really find the right balance between the, the keys and the, and the guitar, so, so every, everything is there, but, but, but everything sounds, yeah. so not, nothing gets back because something other is going to sound so so i think he's he's a good part of why it, why it, it works mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. oh yeah and you mentioned the album before it was hymns for the broken it was a great album but this yeah is that the same quality so how hard is it to keep up the quality was the pressure for you to keep up this great opus not, not really i mean the, the, the i mean the, the only pressure we put on ourselves is to make a great album, um, yeah. but I, I don't know if we consciously actually like. Oh, well, we, this we this record needs to be as good as the last. <laughs> one. No, no, it's impossible to think like that. Yeah. I mean, we always try to do the best album we can, yeah. and uh, that has been for every album we have done. We it's, ne it's never like uh, not hundred percent, but 
I, I don't know. Sometimes uh, the stars are in the right places or something. I don't no. know. Sometimes it just works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we've, we've, we've been lucky. It's yeah. like we're on a roll now. Like two That's albums in a row that are yeah. really exactly. successful and people see, really seem to like them and, and it feels great. Yeah, and um, Flo Janssen of Nightwish appears on In Orbit and I guess on Disconnect. Mm -hmm. So what's behind this collaboration? How did it come? I think it was Tom's wife, Karina, who was friends with uh, Floor, and uh, they were chatting one night, and and Karina said, "How come you don't sing on on an Evergrey record?" And she said, "Well, nobody asked me." And then Karina said, "Well, do you think maybe Floor could sing on the record?" I was like, "Oh, okay. We need we need to find a song for her." And so you did. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, uh, exactly. We, we're we, we're good friends with her, and and um, and um, I guess I, I I think Tom felt a li little bit awkward since Karina usually is the girl singing. Yeah. But since it was Karina's suggestion, it was <laughs> really <laughs> easy for us. <laughs> so it's it's great, and it turned out it sounds sounds awesome, and yeah. uh, hopefully a lot of Nightwish fans will uh, listen. Yeah. As well. Yeah. yeah hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. That's good. And uh, Karina appeared as well on the Paradox of the Flame. It's a different type of song, so it's mm -hmm. a very emotional song. Mm -hmm. Were you responsible for the songwriting as a keyboarder for this emotional song? Actually not. Uh, it was Jonas, uh, the drummer. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's very... He, he plays all instruments very well, so, so he, he uh, also can write keyboards and guitar riffs mm -hmm. and everything. So, so it's uh, actually Jonas, uh, Jonas' song. Mm -hmm. and normally the songwriting is it a the yeah, process where the whole band is involved or who is the main songwriter. I don't know the credits this time because I've just seen the MP3s. Yeah. So who is responsible or was responsible for the songwriting of this new opus? Uh, Tom writes all the lyrics, 100% yeah. of the lyrics. Yeah. And then, but then we, we all we all come with, with ideas. Yeah. But we worked with um, the, this one and the last time and we worked, it's like the bass is Tom and Jonas sitting, like producing it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then find it, yeah, find yeah. the sounds yeah, mm -hmm. and, and then like, and put it a direction. more or less together. And then we all contribute with ideas and mm -hmm. the rest of the band. Yeah. So that's that's how we've been working now for the last two albums. And it, it feels uh, like it's a good concept for us yeah. to mm -hmm. work like that. Seems to work. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it, the uh, last two albums, the new one and the one before. But you, before this, you were a member. You both were members. Um, it was a glorious collision yeah. album. Members left. Members came in. So, what was the reason that this the lineup split up and yeah, the guitar player left and yeah, the drummer left? What was the reason for this switch? Uh, the drummer Hannes he left for Sabaton. He got an offer from ah, yeah. Sabaton, and uh, and I mean Sabaton are doing really well, so he. I don't blame him for that. Uh, Marcus, the guitar player, uh, we, I don't know, we some difficult uh, musical mm -hmm. ideas, more or less. Yeah. Uh, musical differences. Musical differences. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and he, he's also like, uh, do a lot of stuff. He's, he's, I mean, he's a musician that, that do other works all mm -hmm. the time. And it was really hard to, so, sometimes it, crashed uh, so that, that that's why and then um, we had used Jonas and Henrik uh, to fill in a couple of times on some gigs and it felt it felt really good and, and um, so it was natural to ask them mm -hmm. if they wanted to join again and, and they had uh, obviously thought about that as well so yeah. well, they were very happy to come back yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah I mean they've been away for like five years and it mm -hmm. was Maybe it was necessary for them to, to be away for a while, but now was the right time to uh, to join up together again, and it's it's been great ever since. I must mm -hmm. say, yeah. it's really, it's yeah, really the, the, the line best ever really lineup so. ever. Yeah, as far definitely, as you can. definitely, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you did create 
the great videos for distance, the impossible and the paradox of the flame on YouTube. So were you involved in the conception of the videos or how did it, did it come? I mean, we, when we started writing for this album, we had a, a couple of um, like inspiration movies and inspiration soundtracks and like the, the, the way we wanted it to sound and the way, you know, when you, when you watch a movie, sometimes you can get like inspiration musically just yeah. from, from pictures. Yeah. And there were a couple of movies that we saw that we that captured a vibe that we wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, and those movies, it turned out, they were all shot on Iceland, mm -hmm. which we didn't know uh, until until much later. So when it came to do uh, the videos, um, we wanted we really wanted to go to Iceland to, mm -hmm. to try to capture that cool the the initial vibe. Yeah, um, and. Luckily for us, you know, it, it happened. Yes. So we're we're very happy. Yeah. And then, but the whole band didn't go there. Just Tom. Tom and, just Tom. And and Karina. And since it I mean it costs money to go there yeah. and yeah. film do filming. So we made three videos. Yeah. Since we were there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So um, so it got like an Icelandic theme. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three three videos. Mm -hmm. uh, we have we have a fourth video coming out. Oh yeah. yeah. Like next week maybe? Something like that. Well, but it's not from Iceland. No. <laughs> it's from Gothenburg. Yeah. And the whole band will be yeah. Yeah, contributing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I guess on the album before Hymns for the Broken there was a video where you're standing above on a, how should I say, crane or yeah, some kind crane. like that. Yeah. It's, it was very dangerous or was it just a f so called fake was it just a video conception and no it was not fake at all it, it's a crane in yeah. Gothenburg ah, yeah. uh, that we that we uh, had thought about that for many years but we didn't know if we could use it but, but it, we, it, it was like 80 meters up yeah, and you were and, performing uh, in this height yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <coughs> so it's all uh, authentic yeah <laughs> And he's scared of heights, so yeah, that was, kind of that was really that was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Pissing my pants the whole time. Yeah, and yeah, so if you see your uh, period in Evergrey, so uh, you are l longer in the band than you. Mm -hmm. So, what were your personal highs and lows in these yeah, twenty years? So, as far you can, yeah, yeah, say it. Uh, I mean, of course, it was a very hard time when. Um, well, first when the, the when Jonas and Henrik left for the first time, and then we had the Jari from uh, Stratovarius at that time, yeah. and he left as well. So it was only me and Tom, and we really had discussions about quitting, uh, and that was a hard, really hard to start yeah. over again and find new members and uh, yeah. make another album, and so so that. But, but I'm really proud that we that we did it mm -hmm. because otherwise we wouldn't be here today so so it's a good thing that that that's that was the hardest and, and maybe the best at the same time because uh, uh, but I, I don't know it's it feels like things I mean we've been doing this for a long time but it still goes up we still oh. gets more and more fans and uh, we, we've never had like a highlight like 10 we were really big yeah. 10 years ago and I went down we're just moving a little bit up all the time uh, so it, we, we still feel like a new band <laughs> yeah <laughs> they go on tours opening yeah. for other bands yeah. <laughs> yeah. and if you compare the situation in the United States and Europe what's better for Evergrey how would you see it I don't know. Both works really good. Yeah, I mean, we, la we last time we were in the states was really good. Yeah, I think really good. Yeah, we, we. I think we have we've been having some troubles in Germany before. Um, and since the last two albums, it's really starting to work in Germany as well. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Like Holland, Belgium has always been pretty good, but but now now it works in yeah. Germany as well. Okay. And yeah, I guess the last um, DVD, Blue, Blue DVD, was released in 2005. Uh, 2005, four. I guess. Four, four I recorded. Yeah, yeah maybe that's right. And yeah. one year later. So, are there any plans for a new DVD or Blue, Blue Ray release? Live yeah. album or some kind like that? We've, we've been yeah, just talking, uh, about talking about it, but, but it's, it's nothing uh, 
really nothing decided or anything. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's 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 a uh, <laughs> it's still gonna be a hard DVD to uh, top because it's so good. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we really don't know how to. Uh, what it to make how yeah. to make it to to make it new and interesting yeah. well it's new songs of course yeah, yeah, of course. yeah but it yeah. needs to be yeah. Yeah, it needs to be different because mm -hmm. there's no point of just recording a dvd just to record a dvd no, no. there it, ha it has to be you know the right circumstances and the right the right venue and you know just everything has to be right and, and so but it's in square garden yeah, why yeah, not? Yeah, that's an empty, that's empty yeah. Yeah. Square yeah. Garden. That's different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I guess two years ago you you, you um, performed an unplugged, I yeah. guess here in Hamburg. Yeah. So, how was this situation for you? Did you like it, or was it just? Uh, it was, uh, it was awesome. Yeah, it was yeah, really, it was really was good. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it was like for the release, release uh, like a release. Uh, party for hymns yeah. for the broken yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we yeah. played the night before in Gothenburg and then we played in Hamburg uh, and I remember it was kind of packed the place and it was yeah, really it was fun good. yeah it was here in uh, Reeperbahn somewhere yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. around here São Paulo yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's it, was, uh, it was great rock cafe yeah rock cafe yeah, that's right yeah. yeah right that's right so, have you any further messages, information for your fans, something that is left out? Mm. Oh, yeah. Buy our album. Yes, buy the record, buy, yeah. uh, check it out. Tell your friends, come see the shows, buy the shirts, buy his beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I mean... Yeah, we, we're gonna try to play as much as we can now. Uh, this next year, I guess. Mm. This is the last thing we do this year, but then next mm -hmm. year we're gonna. So hopefully we'll be around again, doing a headline show, and uh, you will be watching us. Thank you for this nice interview, Richard and Johan. Thank you. Thank you very much.